Lipkin, and I work for the City of Wyoming, actually the wastewater plant or clean water plant. And I actually got into their lab through operations. So I started out and I did their transfer program and I'm kind of going to promote this transfer program because if you want a job with a two-year degree, you're going to find it because this whole career or these people are all retiring right now. And to give you an example, we had um, a lab aid, aid position opened, 250 people applied for it, people with masters, four-year degrees for lab aid position. Operations, we had 14 and only 17 or seven of those qualified. So it, your chances of getting a job are great. The problem is you got to go to Escanaba for six months. <laughs> That's the only, but it's worth it. It's worth it. That's what I did. I got into um, the city of Wyoming as an operator. I started out as a third shift operator. Um, you do a little bit of lab work. That's where you get this lab stuff at. Um, and then I they had an opening for lab aid, so I took a cut and pay and slid over, and now I'm a lab tech too. But in order for me to do that, I've had to go back to school a few times. So your little, the two-year degree chem tech is just the beginning if you want a career in chemistry. I, I don't know if you've heard other speakers say the same thing. They kind of been saying that, no. <laughs> yeah. Because I found it was, well, I guess because I specialized in, but I just know from, we've hired, because we had retire, retirements in our department too, but there's only five of us. So, and we're pretty much tapped out now. No one's going to retire for a while, who we have in there now. And every time it's like 200 people that apply. But, and I, they won't hire now less than a four-year degree. So even lab aid positions. So I don't. I don't know, it kind of squashes things, doesn't it? <laughs> but I guess there's other, um, I, don't, I don't know what else, how else to put that. Um, the lab tech too, we're at what I'm doing now. Um, I do tests like phosphorus and ammonia. Um, I run an IC. Um, I'm hoping to get into running an ICP and a mercury analyzer. Uh, I do, we do things called the solids test. I think you guys done that here. Having you already weigh a gooch with junk in it, yeah. dry it, yep, cool it, dry it, weigh it again. So we do a lot of that because I'm in wastewater. Um, there's different labs, environmental labs. Um, it's kind of what I am, but it's city run. Um, we're dictated by DEQ. So everything that we do, we do because DEQ tells us we have to. So um, the tests that we run are um, our limits that we do or is all dictated by DEQ. Um, boy, I don't know what else to say, because I'm not real good at this, so you guys shoot questions. <laughs> Go ahead. So it, <clears throat> what you do is specifically for Wyoming, and then they have plants like all over for different areas? Yeah, there's um, our plant uh, services Wyoming. It services um, Byron Center. Um, part of Granville, which that's going away because they've expanded and they're going to take care of their self. Um, some of Kentwood. Um, and uh, we do about 17 million gallons of water a day. Grand Rapids, I think, is 60 million. Um, they have obviously a bigger lab <laughs> with more people. Yeah. Um, but I did, um, usually, like the program that I got in, this, it, I was a water technology program, is what I got into. It's slightly called something different, but it's the same idea. You learn about treatment of water and wastewater, and within that is lab work, because you got to do these tests. And so I happen to be in a, like a medium-sized facility, so we're segregated. We got our maintenance crew, we got our operations crew, we got our lab crew, even though operations does some lab work, and especially on the weekends, because we don't usually work weekends. But in a smaller plant, you're going to be everything. You're going to be the operator, you're going to be the maintenance person, and you're going to be the lab person. I have a friend of mine that works at Sarah Lee in Traverse City and he does all the lab work and he's the operations and everything. It's a decent pay. It's like 50,000, 54. I mean, it's not awesome. It's not 140, but it's decent. So, um, but yeah, there it's it's all over the place. I it's crazy we go to seminars and it's an aging group. 
used to be per all all men, <laughs> but that's changing. So it's it's a it's a good program. It's hectic because you're gonna if you go that route to try to slide into maybe a lab job. Um, I think I did 36 credits in six months. So you, you hustle because <laughs> there's a the first semester is just four classes like normal, but then the second semester you have in that semester two months of internship. So you do those same amount of classes in two months instead of four. So it, it gets kind of crazy. So I think I was in school almost 40 hours. <laughs> but, yeah. And it's cold. <laughs> right. Uh, you mentioned Escanaba. What exactly goes on there? Is that more training? And it's Badenoch. Yeah, Badenoch Community College um, does a transfer program with GRCC. Um, Marquette used to to have or Northern used to have a program too but they stopped theirs and um, so what they do is you get all your core classes here which you probably already you've gotten everything the chemistry your physics your you know your English your writing your gym class whatever all those courses and then when you get up there all you have is um, the water and wastewater treatment courses um, and it's changed a little bit because I did this 13 years ago, so they've kind of evolved in their program. But primarily, it's you, you actually have a water and wastewater treatment um, class, uh, like a microbiology, because you got to know the the bugs is what treats the wastewater. So you need to learn about those. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a specialized chemistry. So unfortunately, when I took that and came back here to try to move on with my chemistry, it really didn't count because it was so specialized. There's a hydraulics course that they have you take because you got to know about the piping and, and everything. And you can move out of that if you don't like the chemistry part of it. I could have went on and did the engineering part of it and went on to build plants. So, I mean, you can go in different directions with it. So I know I'm supposed to be talking about this chem tech and then I'm like trying to sway you over to a different career, but it's just, it's, it's an option and it's, the chances of it, of getting a job, is so much better than the chem tech right now, just from my experience in our plant. So, and you get to do chemistry still. <laughs> so, it's actually more interesting because the microorganisms that you see and well, how they work is kind of interesting. So, no, any other? Well, what happens to the um, the wastewater after it's been treated? We send it um, into the river. So when we're, that's why we had a superintendent. He was kind of, he was a fun guy. And he, I don't know, he, he didn't want wastewater, has such a stigma to it. It's like, oh, the crap plant. Oh, you work at the crap plant. So he changed our name to clean water plant because that's what we do. We clean the water. Unfortunately, that's very confusing for people looking for the water department. <laughs> but. So that's pretty much what we do. By the time we get that out to the river, it's actually cleaner than the river through, the, through their process. But through that process, there's like, there's like typically, you know, it goes in, you got the bar screen. I don't know if you've ever toured wastewater plants. I think more people do now than I never. It was kind of surprising. I went up there, water technology, thinking Culligan Man. And I get up there, I'm like, wastewater plants? because <laughs> we didn't tour those when I was a kid. And I was like, what did I get myself into? I'm up here now. But it, it was, I'm glad I stuck it through. But we do the, the bar screens, and then you do like a preliminary treatment where the, the solids settle, and then it moves on to the activated, which is where the microorganisms eat most of the pollution. And then it goes um, to clarifiers again to settle out those bugs because you don't want to send them out to the river because they'll also eat up the ammonia and the phosphorus and the river and they actually have ammonia and phosphorus in the river and pollutes them that way too. So we get rid of those, either put them back in the system or waste them out and then that goes to chlorine. We treat chlorine. Some people, I think Grand Rapids does UV now, but because we do chlorine we got to do SO2. So there's like a chemical reaction that neutralizes the chlorine and then we shoot it out. So each one of those processes we have to know that we're moving along correctly. So after each process we run phosphorus and we run solids and we run, um, what else do we run on that? BODs, I don't know if you're at a bio oxygen demand test. It's, it's a test where you take the initial DO and then you wait five days, it's called a five day, and then you take it again and then that difference 
um, you'd kind of turn it into milligrams per liter and it gives you an idea of the amount of pollution per se that's in the water. So what the bugs would eat up because of the stuff in it. So, How long does that process take originally? You know, we were trying to figure that out. I think, I think it's eight to 10 hours. I think because we were trying to figure out how long it takes in each process. So like the clarifiers are like one to two hours. The contact chamber where the chlorine hits the water is like an hour. Um, SO2 is instant. That's just like goes through it, hits it, it's gone. Um, but the aeration, I couldn't remember how long that. I think that's three or four hours in there too. So, But that we've got the bigger plant. You can have, I used to work, which was kind of cool and that was kind of awesome too, is because I got into this wastewater there's a guy that does little, what they're called package plants. And um, he, he used to have his, because um, it was a smaller plant, they send out to labs. So the, um, who was sending out was closing, and it was actually my boss had his own separate little lab on the side. And he, uh, that guy sold, bought all his equipment, and then they hired me to run the tests. And I got like $800, $900 for four hours a week of work. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> nice little extra cash. But you can get into that kind of thing, all these little, and it was, and then when he retired, he um, moved to Ohio, and then because I had my licensure from being in operations, I got with another buddy that I work with, and we partnered up, and then we actually ran the plant on top of doing the, so it was, it was kind of a nice little thing that we had going. But, but this, this kind of, and that, that, that plant, what I mean by a package plant, it was um, one tank, and you did all those things in one tank, except it didn't have the, um, where you separated, like the primary treatment, because it was all it was, was a trailer park. A lot of your trailer parks out in the boonies have their own treatment plants. So, and I used to help them out. There was a plant on Alpine, Alpine Meadows. Have you guys heard of that trailer park? It's out on, I think it's Fruit Ridge, <coughs> just past uh, Four Mile, and they had their own treatment plant. And I used to, when he would go on vacation, I'd go in and he'd give him a couple hundred dollars for watching the plant. So it's kind of a, there's a lot, there's places like infrastructure you can work, Tetra Tech. Um, they won't pay as well as if you can get into a, you know, a city or a, I mean, there's, um, gosh, what other places you can go avenues with it is, your industries, like Sara Lee, they have pretreatment, and they got to, because they have so much pollution that the cities can't handle it. So they have to pretreat, get a little bit better before they can send it, because they have permits too. So that, dis that uh, discharge into our system. So, so it's a pretty specified degree in order to get the job. It is, and that's why out of 14 people that applied, only seven actually qualified. Do they offer schooling for that? Like if it's beyond the two-year degree closer to Grand Rapids? No. Nope. Nope. They tried to get it here. We were working on it, and it, it, I guess the two schools weren't cooperating <laughs> or something. I don't know. <coughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I did have a chance to tour the Grand Rapids plant um, a few years back, and I remember the speaker that gave a presentation mentioned something about getting rid of garbage disposals in your kitchens. I don't know if you talk about that, you know, in uh, Wyoming or anything like that, or if you have heard the same. No, we, um, I've heard of that, and I can see why, because it adds more, what the BOD, that's where your BOD's coming from, is that, but I think that's been going on for so long that plants have already adjusted to that. So, and we, we have industries like Country Fresh, you can imagine, and Michigan turkey, the kind of stuff they bring us. So it, it's, that's what's interesting, actually, is when you're testing those guys and you're like, holy cow, 5,000 parts <laughs> per billion of BOD. <laughs> they usually give us like 60 parts of phosphorus. Our limit when it leaves a plant has to be an average of one for the month. So we have to treat down chlorine. Uh, we have to have that down to 0 0.036 parts per million or we violate and we have to pay a fine. Ammonia, I think our limit is eight right now, parts per million. The plant that I used to work at at Caesarfield, it was a combination of nitrite, nitrate, and ammonia, and we could have no more than five parts. 
because of where it discharged into um, it discharged into what's called a seepage bed, and because they used wells, it went faster into their wells. So we had to we had to actually they had to pay uh, people to monitor the wells and the direction of where the water flow was also. So they would have that too. That's kind of how I lost the job as Myers came in and. Uh, we, before the guy was paying us two to do the wastewater, another guy to do the water, and another guy to do the wells, and infrastructure said, well, hey, we'll come in and we'll do all this for you. They were like, bye-bye. <laughs> You've been doing this eight years, but <laughs> we got a better deal, so. <laughs> yeah. But there's, I don't know, I, there's another um, uh, lady I work with that's in operations. Her husband does a lot of these little, little plants, too, around town. And, some are good, some are bad. I had a nightmare one. I got um, called and they asked, they needed uh, this development company, got into wastewater treatment. And they had one out, Caledonia. These, these are like in the boonies. This one, you had to drive forever. And it was way in the back of this golf course. It was behind this thing. And they, what they did is they did all this development and then the housing boom. So there's like all this huge, all these developments with two houses on it and this huge, this little nice activated plant with two houses on it. And then there's another plant that was the bio discs. There's different treatments. We do activated this when it was a bio disc. So the bugs actually grow on this huge disc and then roll into the water. And uh, so he had this little plant and I go look at it and the guy's taking a DO reading with a probe, he never calibrated. You could clearly see it was broke. <laughs> and I was just like, you, you're kind of wasting your time. <laughs> just like, this is like, but he didn't know what he was doing because they'd lost their operator. And so, and then I look into their, where they had their clarifiers and everything's floating on top. And, and then I go look where their storage tanks are and everything's full and floating on top. And I was just like, oh, and they weren't, and I actually found out who used to work for him, and he said, run. <laughs> so they didn't pay me for a year. So, and then he won't, any changes you want to make, they won't do. So there's that too, when you're, if you want side projects and you go that direction, you gotta watch. And then I found out, because I'd given them my license number, because I've got a wastewater license number, and they were, all they wanted was my license number to show DEQ that they had a license operator. So they were putting my name for a month until I found out, or actually it might have been more like two, because I never went back, I never signed anything. And then all of a sudden I get an email that says, hey, uh, we need some help with something. And I'm like, I haven't talked to you in, I think it must have been two months. And he's like, oh, you're still working for us. And then I called DEQ with the guy that oversees them. And he's like, oh yeah, they're using your number. I was like, they're not supposed to use my number. <laughs> Is that legal or just unethical? That was unethical. Yeah, kind of illegal because I never did anything binding with them. I didn't sign anything binding that I just gave them to prove that I had a license. It wasn't for them to use it. Could you have been liable if something had gone wrong? Yes. That's why I was upset. <laughs> yes, because they were violating so bad that, and they weren't willing to do anything to change it, that that comes back on me because I'd be the one writing the reports and that and signing my name. So. Yeah, it was kind of scary for a second that a guy was like, no, I know these guys and it's okay. They got you covered, I ripped it up. <laughs> so I was like, thank you. <laughs> and I kind of was like at the company, it's like, okay, you haven't seen me in two months. I mean, what kind of, that kind of told me what they were like, because you'd think you'd want someone there looking at their plants. But yeah, all three of them were like that. They had all these developments and one or two houses on them. And yeah, it was a mess. So, anything else? Can you talk a little bit about the different levels of wastewater treatment jobs? Um, the operator level? Yeah, okay, so the program that I went into, it was called Water Technology, and like I said, it's a slightly different name now. And, and the, what that did is that gave me a chance to write what's called a D license. It's a, a state license, it's a B, inner, inner, what do you call that? beginning license and there's four of them all together or and I actually actually um, wrote my water licenses because there's water treatment also 
And uh, so then I got to write an F4, a D4, and a D1 or D4 for distribution. And when I came out of school, because Beta Knock is so well known for this, that you get to, and you do that internship, that qualifies you to take those tests. Um, once you pass those tests, then you can get into, like I said, a water treatment operator is usually where you start, or um, a wastewater operator, depending on what direction you go to. Some places, like that one up at Cedarfield, had both. They had a water system and a wastewater system, so you could do both in that one. Um, what, what you do in an operations position, unfortunately, the reason why I bailed out of operations went into the lab is because I had children and I was third shift. <laughs> <laughs> it's holiday and weekends because wastewater treatment, you, you can't tell everybody to stop flushing your toilet. So you're, it's a 24-hour operation most of the time. Smaller plants, not so much like the package plant because um, it, it takes so long to fill that usually, like that one was a, you go check on it every day because it was kind of self-run, the package plants, but the bigger plants, you got to have some there all the time, um, 24 hours a day, three shifts. So you, you do stuff like you monitor all the equipment, um, sample, you're the one that picks up all the samples from the different processes. Um, you kind of uh, make decisions on how you want to run the process, how much you want to waste, how much you want to return, you know, and that activated part of it. Um, there's, boy, I'm trying to. I think that's all for operations. That's pretty much what you do in all the plants. Maintenance is you're fixing this equipment. So you're going in the tanks and you're fixing it or you're fixing a pump. Um, is that kind of difference. So when we were at Cedarfield, I was, that was not my strong point was maintenance. So the, I partner, that's why I partnered up with someone else and he was. So when he did the oil changes on the, on the blowers and he'd do you know, the, the pre-maintenance stuff, anything that needed to be a belt or you know, those kinds of things he did. Uh, and then, then there's the lab portion of it, and that's what that's where I ended up. So, and that one's kind of nice because that one's a Monday through Friday, and you know, a little bit of weekend work every once in a while. So, I think Granville, their guys, the way they are set up, they take turns. So they'll have um, one week they're the operator; they operate and the other week they do the lab work and so they kind of rotate out who does what and I think they might have their own maintenance. So, And I know Grand Rapids is segregated like we are. They got their maintenance, they got their operators, they've got their... They have, I think, like three operators on. Ours, unfortunately, have one. <laughs> so, because we're smaller. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not real sure how else to explain what what we do. This can be a lot of decisions when plants run, you know, when they're running nice, it's nice, and when they're not, it's not so nice. So there's a lot of boring days, and then there's a lot of hustle days, and it's kind of the same way in the lab with that, because if they're having trouble, then guess who's doing tests to find out why. <laughs> so it's kind of an all or nothing in all the positions. Same thing with maintenance. It seems like everything goes along and everything breaks at the same time, like at your house. And so. Uh, is anything else? What brought you to water technology? Like, what made you want to go into that? Oh gosh, um, I went back to school because when I was working at Speedway, making five dollars an hour, <laughs> I was like, okay, this isn't going to work as a manager. <laughs> this is not going to pay for things. So I got back into school and I actually wanted to do teaching, and it was taking. I came back here, um, got my uh, two year. Then did the macro with uh, Grand Valley, and I had, because I'd had such a span and had kids, it I had uh, I'd taken calculus. I'm gonna date myself in '87, and this is, was now '94, <laughs> and they were like, "You're gonna have to take all that math over again." And I was already up to calculus too, so I was like, oh, "I I don't know if I can do this anymore." <laughs> So I came back here and I looked at that water technology thing and as like I said, I thought it was Culligan Man stuff. I was gonna work at Culligan Man and I was gonna, you know, test water. And so I found out I just needed three more classes to be able to transfer up to Escanaba. I just needed uh, two chemistry classes and a physics class because I'd taken everything else. And the kids and I sh we shipped up to Escanaba and 
six months. And then I, because of the intern, that's what's kind of nice about the internships, is I got into Wyoming for my intern. And um, so they got to see how I worked. That's like where you promote yourself and show them what you can do. And they had an opening in December, and I got hired. So I got done in May and had a job by that December. And that was 13 years ago. And it's, it's like I said, we just, we're going to have two more people in the next five years retire, just in operations in our part. So we might have a lab, our chemist, he's 67, but he's not going anywhere. So <laughs> unless something horrible happens, which we don't want, <laughs> he's going to be there until he can't. Any other questions? So it, was, it wasn't too bad. It was different. You know, I drove up there with two kids and myself, and first and the second grader. But we made it. <laughs> they survived, I survived. <laughs> no other questions? Supposed to fill your whole class hour. You got a whole hour to go. <laughs> guess I should do presentations on huh, show the whole process. I mean, I could. I guess I could bring something like that in. But it's more of a career, and it's like a career. Kind of what we do. So. Yeah. Do you work with other chemists from other treatment plants? Do you converse mm. about? Um, you, you know, there's things you can get involved with. Um, there's a lab practices committee that you can get involved with. Um, MWEA you can get involved with. AWWA if you're on the water side. So yeah, you do. And there's seminars because we have continuing education credits. Mm -hmm. So you go to, you know, you have to go to seminars here and there. And that's when you, you know, if you have an issue, it's like, hey, you converse with other people. Hey, we're having this issue. You know, our, cause when we do a, like an example, a BOD test, our blanks, because there's QC up the wazoo. There's all kinds of QC. And, and the blank, it, you can't have it more than 0.2 difference. And so a lot of um, plants struggle with that. And it can be for a lot of different reasons. So you have these issues, and you talk to other people, and you go, hey, what'd you do you know, to correct it? And so yeah, you do. In that respect, you, you talk to people. An example on QC, I had to do TKN today. It's one sample, <laughs> and I have to do a blank, a standard, a duplication, and a spike with that for one sample. So it's like what could take probably an hour took me three and a half <laughs> because of all the QC. So they keep you in check. So precision and accuracy is important when you're doing chemistry work. Don't like to start over. <laughs> it's not fun. And that's we're actually having a problem right now. The TKN for some reason I can't get real good recoveries, and it's now then we got to figure out why. We had a phosphorus contamination. That's disastrous. But we actually cleared it up in two days. Usually it takes a week or two if you get phosphorus contamination. So. When things turn blue and they're not, that's not a good sign. <laughs> um, when you're working, are you like doing everything by yourself? Like you're assigned to things, or are you like, kind of yeah. with the other people in the lab? Or? Well, be yeah, because like the one obviously in Cedarfield, I was the only one. Mm -hmm. So um, yep, and there we kind of designate. We do stations, what we call. So we do the, someone does the wet chem, which is your phosphorus, your ammonia, um, cyanide they do. Uh, what else do they do on that station? And the, the back tea, we do fecal coliform every day, and the chlorine test. So that's like their tests that they run. Um, the solid station is um, the BOD, the solids. Jeez, uh, is that all they do over there in that station? I guess it is, just BOD and solids. But that filters in a lot, so with BOD, because uh, of that dry, or the solid, because of the drying and the weighing and all that, it's like you get set in and then someone brings more and <laughs> so you got reset up. So 
that one kind of can keep you busy. And then there's what we call the third station. That's where we run TKN, the IC, and we have a grease and oil instrument. That one's kind of fun, actually, the grease and oil. We've had, so sometimes when, because we do industries, we have, so there's another department, I forgot about the IPP department. Uh, they, what they do is because we have industries, we have to make sure that they're not sending us stuff they're not supposed to. So they go out and sample. So not only do we the process samples, we do the IPP samples. And they, um, they bring us industry samples and um, we test for metals, um, the normal BOD, depending on what it is. Like a plating company, we're not going to test for BOD. We're going to test for metals for them. So that, that's where the other samples are coming in on the side. So so. It is, yep, yep. And then right now we got one on maternity leave, so we had to split the third station in half. So we've been kind of running a little ragged. That's <laughs> kind of rushing. It's like, oh, I'm not going to get done in time. So, yeah. What kind of instruments do you guys use in the lab itself? It's out, we do um, some Orion meters, which I think you guys have those, don't you? Like the pH pH meters and um, w and those meters usually you can do several different tests on them. So we have an ammonia probe for that meter, chlorine probe for that meter. I think you can do nitrate. No, yeah, nitrate also had. There's a probe for that, but we do that on the IC. Um, we have um, a DO meter for the BOD test. Uh, let's see what else do we do. Obviously the ovens and the furnaces for the. BOD and the, or the solids and the, the BSS, the volatiles, um, desiccators. Uh, what else do we have? Well, the grease and oil instrument. I don't know if you've ever seen a grease and oil instrument. They used to do that with Freon, and it was these crazy, like the old fashioned, the big, they're like the big bulb type, and then the, they almost look like a flask, but they're oversized. The old, you remember those, do you see those in old science movies? And you, put the Freon in there and you'd shake it up and it would separate the grease and oil out. I think, the, I think it would be trapped in the Freon and then you'd pour off the rest and then you'd do that several times to make sure you got you know, all the stuff that's not oil and grease and then you have to evaporate that off. So Freon is not environmentally friendly. So now we use hexane and methanol. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's all in this nice little instrument that they have and you just put the sample on and it goes through this little thing and separates it all for you and there's no self-shaking and that kind of thing. So that, that one's kind of a fun one. Um, the IC that runs the nitrite, nitrates, uh, fluoride, chloride, sulfate. Uh, let's see what else we have. And then uh, the ICP, which he runs the metals on. We did have a GCMS, but we didn't do enough sampling to to warrant having it, and the water plant needed one more, so we ended up giving up. We kind of are in conjunction with the water plant, even though they're in Holland. So uh, I'm trying to—I th think that's about about all the tests. Operators have um, some instruments; they do little hot kits for quick checks, um, but they're not EPA approved, so they can't use them for real numbers. But for process control. They have a little chlorine hot kit. Um, there's uh, like a little uh, portable DO meter, OPR, those kinds of things. I also got involved with, they have what's called scrubbers out there. They're these huge, oh man, how big are they? They're big. Probably as long as that, it might be as long as this whole counter and probably to the blackboard and up to the ceiling. <laughs> They're huge. And they scrub the air for, um, it's a two-stage back there because we have, I was telling you that we return that waste and the activated back into the system where we waste it out. When what we do with that stuff that's wasted out is we um, treat it with lime, dewater it, treat it with lime, and then that goes to the landfill, or not to the land, farmland. So we recycle. It's fertilizer for the farmers. It helps us get rid of the waste. Um, when in the wintertime when we can't, We've got, um, I know you've probably heard of it, maybe if you, in the news, but we do, it's called the Grand Rapids Authority, Grand, how is it, GVRBA, GV Grand, something Grand Rapids, something regional, something, anyways. 
So what we do is instead of storing that, we ship that over to Grand Rapids and then they process it and they, they dewater it and send it to landfill. But um, anyways, these scrubbers get, because of the odors from those, those tanks that are storing our sludge, it's got ammonia and sulfur in it. So these scrubbers scrub the air so it doesn't make the neighbors mad. <laughs> but we've got into calibrating those and these probes aren't little probes like in a lab, they're like this big and this tall <laughs> that are in there. So we got doing those, it's kind of interesting. So. No? What's that? We've had things, there's um, kind of, but you, that's where you start conversing with other people and talking. Sometimes your reps will know. We have in cyanide, um, sulfide can affect your test and make it look like there's cyanide when there's not. And we've just had, we just had an issue with that. Um, it was one of the industries, it was that, that's a colorimetric test at the end and it turns a pink if there's cyanide and it was like dark pink. <laughs> We're like, whoa, <laughs> which is not good because it would kill all the microorganisms in our plant. That's why they test it. And we called them and they're like, that it's gotta be the sulfides. And sure enough, that's what it was. So yeah, there's, you gotta know your chemistry for sure because that, that does interfere. So I don't know if that answers your question or. Yeah. Yeah. Granville's good at sending us sulfide. They have a sulfide issue. They like to send us lots of sulfur. <laughs> Get a lot of hydrogen sulfide alarms from them. So, yeah. I don't know. If you get a chance, go ahead and call us up and um, take a tour of the Wyoming plant. It's kind of, it's a neat plant. Where is it located at? What's that? Where is it located? Um, you know, it's actually in Granville, but it, you know, where Ivan Rust, dead, dead ends. <coughs> yeah, yeah. There's a bike trail. I don't know if anybody's done the bike trail. They, it rides right along there. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Let's thank our speaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks.